Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Photoshop User TV, which of course is brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, publisher of this fine magazine and many other things. We are live right now. We're live. We are live it's right crazy. now. Yes. Live on the air. You can watch at kelbytv.com slash on air. Well, I mean, obviously, if you're watching that right now, you probably know that. It is live. Because that you're live. Sense. <laughs> you're I can here see with you. us. Ah, the beauty of live. So I'm Dave Cross with me today, Corey Barker. Hello. And over there in the old weather station. Hey guys, calls. how's it going? The reliable weather station. Yes. Yep, here we go. Hey. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we are going to show you some things about Photoshop. Really? Since, you I know, did not prepare for Didn't it. you? Well, oh. well Corey's going to do some Excel. I, spent I might have been PowerPoint. All morning <laughs> in InDesign. <laughs> And now no, it's no all PowerPoint. For no, no, no PowerPoint. No. PowerPoint. See, PowerPoint's on the next week's episode. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've got, I've got back that, that all one. planned out. I've got a full hour and a half tutorial. It's going to be an extended show <laughs> on PowerPoint. No. Yeah, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I think people should know. No. Yes. Um, Anyway, I do have something in Photoshop, may I? Well, good. Yeah. Please do, because everyone's waited, waiting anxiously. Ah, uh, so. yes. I'm, I'm revisiting Hollywood. For. Oh, okay. She's <laughs> hand signals. No, it's a she's bug. She's over there behind the camera doing this, and I'm like, <laughs> what does that, that camera, mean? That camera. She's like, there's a bug in her in her face. Okay. I apologize. No. All right. So, um, re uh, revisiting Hollywood once again, not surprisingly. Uh, I've got a graphic here. Actually, somebody wrote me and asked me if uh, this would be very difficult to recreate, and it's actually not. And it's actually the. If you saw Men in Black Three, which is a pretty good movie, by the way, I saw it. Did you see it, Pete? I did. Yes, I liked it. Um, there was this graphic, promotional graphic, and it was a pattern of the MIB logo, just a pattern of it. And then they had to kind of face kind of like in, you know, embedded in there in a weird way. Took a while to figure it out, but here is a cool and quick way to achieve that. Now, what I have here is a simple line of text, actually two lines of text that I just created. It's just the MIB logo. It's MIB3 because that's what the movie is. And I just made two lines of that copy. All I did was two. As you notice, I offset so they wouldn't be perfectly aligned. I offset a little bit. Now, all I'm going to do here is just make a step and repeat, just Option Command T, and I'm just going to arrow, use my arrow keys and nudge that down a little bit. Press Enter, and then Shift Option Command, and then press T over and over, and then it repeats that pattern all the way down the image. And I can keep going on and on. There is a quick e uh, way to get that pattern. So. I've already got it set up in another file. I just wanted to show you real quick how I created the pattern. But what I have here, aha, all right. So I've got my pattern created, and now I need an image to make the effect with. So I have this guy here. He's looking pretty mean. He's not necessarily a man in black, but he looks, he looks mean he's enough. He's a man in, fashionable man in black. He's, a man, he's, man, <laughs> he's fashionably man in black. And stylish sunglasses as well. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this image and just go ahead and drag and drop it into this layout. Again, add the shift key as you drag and drop, and it will put it in the center of the um, document. And what I'm going to do is actually position this beneath the layer containing my pattern. Now, you'll notice in this new file, my text pattern is now a rasterized layer. Because what I did was, here's my all those different text layers that you saw me do a moment ago, I merely merged them all into a single layer um, just so I could uh, be able to do it rasterized because it's kind of hard to do with rasterized uh, text layers. So here's my image behind the uh, graphic, and we're done. Thank you for Beautiful. doing it. No, um, <laughs> no I'm actually going to turn the pattern layer off for a moment and select the image layer and just go to Image Adjustments and choose Threshold, not Posterize. <laughs> Apparently it's not voice activated. You have to actually. You hate it when you select something and you let go of your mouse or something and it just jumps up to that, um, that one above Photoshop. or below. That wasn't you. That was Photoshop. That, that was that. Photoshop indeed. <laughs> so um, threshold. And this basically forces the image to black or uh, black and white, no gray tones. And just move the slider back and forth and you can determine how much detail you want to have in it. And I'm, actually where it, where it fell looked pretty good. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and leave it at that. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Now, going to load the brightness or the uh, white values in this image as an active selection by holding down the command key and in the channels panel here, just click on the RGB composite channel. Loads everything but the black as an active selection. So back in our image, 
I'm going to turn off the original layer and reselect and activate the pattern layer. Now remember when we loaded that selection, it loaded everything that was white, which meant the background and all the other detail, which is not what I want. I actually want the inverse of that. So with the selection active, I'm going to go under Select Inverse. And then copy that selected uh, area to its own layer. Basically, I copied that area of the text to its own layer. Now, with them overlapping each other, you can't tell it's there. But here's the cool thing. Just simply use your arrow keys and nudge it a couple of notches over. And voila, hmm. the man Look appears in place. In black. Men in black. So <laughs> that's this quick and dirty trick about how to achieve that effect. Really cool. Here's another little, if you don't want to do the nudging, you know, here's one little, little extra thing. You can actually go in here and add a stroke layer style. And voila, hmm. it appears as well. So you can actually determine. It's only down to one pixel stroke set to black on the outside, and then that image will appear as well. So there's two different ways to go about it and uh, get that effect quickly and easily. I like that. Very nice. Yeah. Very so. nice. So uh, are you like making posters now for Hollywood? Is that what's happening? They haven't called they yet. haven't called yet? I don't know why. I don't know why. You're, you're probably doing it in a fraction of the time I that know. the other people do. So. I actually know a lot of people that do this kind of work. But I, I feel, you know what the thing is? I think you have to be in California. It's like they won't talk to you if you don't. Do you live here? No. All right. Yeah, and that yeah. makes sense with today's technology because there's no way you could deliver files, you know. No, there's no way I could be in Australia and send my <laughs> files over the, this thing called the Internet. But oh well. All right, well, um, we're going to take a quick break, and coming up, you'll see a quick uh, commercial for Tony Corre's uh, upcoming class on Kelby training. So take a look at that. Hey, everybody, Tony Corbell. For me, it's always been about light control. It's light quality, light quantity, light direction. Think about the light tools that we have to work with. Sunlight, ambient light, portable flash, studio lights. There's not one tool that is sort of everything to all pictures. You really do have to have a variety of light shaping tools. And in this case, we're going to look at several of them. If we can take those four tools of light and understand all the controls that we have, what we can do with our photography is unlimited. We can do anything that we want once we understand the foundation of our craft. I hope you'll tune in. We've got a lot more things in store for you here at KelbyTraining.com. Well, hi, everyone. We are back, and we've got more Photoshop goodness coming up. But first, we must say that the name of that gentleman... <laughs> Corbell. In the, it's Corbell. That was my French-Canadian coming up, Corbeil. Yes. <laughs> he, had to, he had to do that because he forgot a shirt today. We did not address know, the I, shirt I issue. No, it's just don't, don't bring attention if to it. If you are a longtime viewer of Photoshop <laughs> user TV, you know that Dave always wears something Canadian. And today, he's let us down. Well, I always got this to fall back on. So yes, well, well there's that. That was yes. good. Well, that, that's, that's everywhere you go, so good job on that. Yeah, but I just was distracted this morning and forgot, so. We're all busy. Given a little summer props break. to we Photoshop understand. World instead, so. Okay, so what do you have for us today? Well, I want to talk a little bit about, um, on the surface, it's going to look like I'm just talking about a new filter in CS6, but mm -hmm. what I really want to talk about is being adventurous and just trying things. Uh, yes. So one of the new filters in Photoshop CS6 is the adaptive wide angle filter, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool when you have a photo taken with a wide angle lens and you notice things are a little bit curved just because that's the nature of the lens. So of course we go to adaptive wide angle and you can do things like this lamppost really should be straight. So you click along it and it straightens things out for you. And that's kind of the concept of that, that filter, sure. which, is, which is great. But I'm always trying to go, okay, that's, that's kind of the official use of it. That's what it's for. That's what it's designed but for, yes. <laughs> when you start looking at the things you can do in Photoshop, as you probably know, I'm a big fan of smart objects and smart filters. And one of the things that occurs to me is then you can do more things and experiment. Mm -hmm. So I decided the other day, it was just one of those things where I was just playing around. So I said, all right, let's take this photograph and convert to a smart object. And even though it clearly doesn't need it, let's go to adaptive wide angle. And you might be thinking, what? That doesn't make any sense because this was not taken with a wide angle. And that's kind of the idea. I thought, well, what just happens if I start to look at some of these other options? Now, some of them won't work because obviously this wasn't, this is a JPEG from a stock photo, so it's not going to have some of the things and someone will give you errors. But mm -hmm. if we just try it and we can say, the whole theory of this is to say, for example, this should be straight. Well, clearly it shouldn't. And when you do, you get a very odd result like mm. that. So I click OK and 
get a very strange looking result. But one of the things that we always have to remember with smart filters is that we've got various options, not the least of which is if you double click on the little symbol over here, it opens up some of these options. And as I started playing and started looking at some of the blend modes, all of a sudden I was finding that I was able to multiple or to blend in the ah. filter, the adaptive wide angle filter with the original mm -hmm, in some interesting mm -hmm. ways. And just not that I necessarily like this the way it is, but just the real point of this is to say, look at it in a different way. I mean, that's very unusual right now. And I'm kind of liking the way the direction that's going. The start of a good it's, effect. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it's just from a more, this is from a more artistic unusual. You obviously wouldn't do this to correct a photograph, but that's kind of the point. And then it occurred to me the other advantage of smart filters is you can do it more than once. So I could actually go back in and start saying, well, what if I do another one on top of that and start just kind of manually adjusting and then once again take that one and do some other kind of blend mode. So now we're just starting to get this more kind of unusual artistic looking thing. And again, you may do all of this and find that nothing in there really appeals right. to you, so you click OK and so okay, I don't really like that last one, let's just throw that one out and go back to where we were before and continue working. So really that's my point is to say if you see a brand new effect and every demonstration says open a photograph that's taken with a yeah. wide angle lens and do this, that doesn't mean that's the only thing you can use it for, that just means that's the typical or normal way. But taking advantage of smart objects, smart filters means you can, I just decide to say, well, I don't know what will happen if I do this to this photo. I really had no idea. And I'm, it's not ideal, it's not perfect yet, but I just like the fact that it's getting mm. me closer. So now I can say, what if I just lower the opacity maybe a little bit and then build on that in some other way. Right. Maybe make that into a smart object and then do something different. It's really, that's the point. It's just to let your creative juices flow and something realize. Always, I've always, I just did a feature for mm -hmm. the Photoshop user magazine and just talked about layer styles and how you, you know don't necessarily, and Pete and I know you do this too, is don't necessarily take them for what their face value is, right. what they're named, and, you know, and Bert's mm -hmm. a big proponent yep. of this too. Mm -hmm. Go to the filters, go to the brushes and just Push those sliders back and forth yep. and up and down. I mean, just do everything, and you never know what. And you're this is this is a good example too, where this <clears throat> excuse me, the whole thing took three minutes. It wasn't like I invested two hours in some experiment. I just said, oh, well, what will happen if I smart object adapt to wide angle? Double click. Oh, that's kind of interesting. And there's going to be those times where you do go go, go into something like that, and you get nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you just you're, you're you're going nowhere, and it just turns in. But you know now. He was like, well, right. if I tried that, I tried that. It didn't work. Yeah, you know, but I think a, a big thing you got to think about is that we tend to get in ruts. We get used to doing something one way, sure. right? And we keep doing it over and over again. And what this does, if nothing else, it keeps reminding you to go in there and play and try, try something, try something new exactly. because mm -hmm. you may discover something. Mm -hmm. It all of a sudden you've got something with motion and and passion in there just by doing mm -hmm. something quirky with right. it. And that's what we need to train ourselves. Mm -hmm. we, we get into the habit of doing things the yeah, same no, way and we'll keep having the same output. I'll tell you one there. thing I do still to this day is um, I use HDR toning in Photoshop on textures. And you wouldn't believe how great mm -hmm. it punches textures sure. and really makes them sharp and everything like that. Not necessarily what, was, what it was designed for. It's designed to, you know, you know, fake mm -hmm. an HDR look. Try it on textures, and you get some really, really uh, thing, cool things that pop out like that. So now, just before we go to break, Pete, I believe you have a quick tip. Quick tip for you here. Yep, and this tip <clears throat> is uh, basically to remind you of some of the things you can do with your panels. Uh, for one thing, usually when you start up and you turn on your windows and you've got your panel, something like your swatches here, you get your normal little swatch colors here. Well, for me, since I'm colorblind, what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to change it to something like a large list because sometimes I'm not sure if that's green or brown. And, and some people forget that they can change these to how they're going to do large list, small list. But you can also do that with your panels over here. If you have a hard time seeing these little tiny things, make sure you come over here and do, say, your large thumbnails. And that's a real quick thing, but this is the one that I wanted to show you that I was reminded just this week, last week by Zorana, came over from Adobe. When you're working with your layer styles, oftentimes I'm using something like a cardstock or something that I want to lay on top of a design and I'm going to have a certain type of drop shadow in there, and I'm going to use these type of things over and over again. Well, before, you were stuck with whatever default Adobe gave you. Now in CS6, one of my favorite new hidden features that she reminded me of is the fact that you can click on Make Default, and whatever settings you have here, now every time you go in there, that's going to be the default setting for that particular layer style, and you can do that with each and every one of them. 
So that right there is going to save you nanoseconds of time each time you go in there. But uh, I just think it's a great thing to remember that these panels are here for you to be able to adjust. And if you can go in there and adjust them to how you are apt to use them, it's going to save you time and make you more efficient. Very good. Quick tip. Good tip. So we're going to uh, take another break. And uh, coming up in September is Photoshop World, <gasps> our favorite event. It's such a cool thing to be in a... And we're in Vegas. In Las Vegas yeah. with a whole bunch of people who love Photoshop. And Corey will be there. Pete will be there. I'll be there. And a whole bunch of other people. So... Uh, I am excited. Yes. We'll uh, find out about that very shortly, even more. So let's go to break and come back and talk more about Photoshop World. Yes. That's a so, pretty cool summary of Photoshop rules. I was going to say that there was certainly a lot of partying being yeah. shown in that. <laughs> that never uh, really happens. It's all about the classes. There, there actually is some education <laughs> going on, you know. But we're going to be in Vegas, so you know. It's yeah. good. No, but it, is, it actually really is a good summary because it shows a lot oh, yeah. of the other stuff that goes on. It really is fun. I mean, we do have a blast, mm -hmm. you know, in, in addition to the training, which the training is fun, too. Right. You know, all the, everything that you know, surrounds the event is, is really a blast, so we have a lot of fun. I do find it interesting that in that movie, uh, as I watch that ad, I see my daughter in there three times each time with a different hair, yeah. hairstyle and different Photoshop world. So. And, that's, and that's all in one event. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> so I hope you can join us, photoshopworld.com. There's early bird pricing going on, so if you do it right now, this minute, we'll wait. Yes, go ahead. Okay, good. So I think that's about it, other it, than like prizes that just kind I, of it, it, flew have, by. We have to go. I don't know. <laughs> okay, yes, prize time. I don't know why we call it prizes. We just because we're not really asking any questions anymore. Well, we just kind of do this. It's kind of a. It's just, it's just fun giveaways. Blatant giveaways. Because give we have a warehouse full of stuff we have to get rid of. No. What do we have today? This week we have the Perfect Effects Three from On One, as you can see right here. You will love that. I love it. You love it. Uh, Photo Frame also an On One. Great plug -in. They have great plugins. They do. They really great have collection. some of the best stuff out there. And lastly, we have Picture Perfect Practice. This book I have not looked at. This is, in fact, well, this is the very first at. time I've seen <laughs> it's it. Brand new. <laughs> brand new. But yeah, nice cover. you will get all these three. And how will they get all these? Well, five? technically, they just have to go to kelbytv.com and, right. and answer or just put a comment. But since some people like since, a, oh, a we're trivia gonna have question, a fun I'm going to ask ah. just for fun a trivia question and from, where are you my, getting those? from my <laughs> app called the Photoshop Quiz Game, ah, available okay. now. Uh, which of these functions only works with an internet connection? Mini bridge. Save for web and devices, export, Zoomify, or cooler. Ah, mm -hmm. I know. So I'm, I hope you would. So there's a sample question, but you don't have to answer that. That's just for fun. To get these prizes, just fill in a little form and leave a comment of some kind, maybe a suggestion of a tutorial. You'd like to see something of that nature, and you could win this fine collection of prizes. You think I should show my cool thing I have on screen? Go for it. Corey's a nerd. Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me see if I can get it to work again. <laughs> Corey has been playing. Of course, on cue, it doesn't work. Here we go. 
What you got over there, Corey? You got something on it's your desktop? It's really fascinating when it works. There we okay, go. there we go. If you put my screen, all right. So yeah. this is a cool site. Look, I'm actually Iron Man. Look, <laughs> you see my? I'm actually in the suit on Iron Man. I found this site by accident, and I, I'm, I kid you not. I was playing around with it for like an hour. <laughs> Just, that's that's actually surprised me somehow. I actually re recorded myself on screen and then edited myself in the trip. No, I didn't. Do that. <laughs> that is way nerdy. Yeah. But actually, it's kind of a cool thing. If you want to check it out, it's IamIronMan2.com uh, forward slash UK. It's obviously a British thing that uh, they had done for the promotion for the Iron Man 2 Very movie. Cool. Pretty cool thing. Uh, check it out. Um, that has nothing to do with anything we're talking about on the show today, but I just thought that was pretty cool. It is so, kind of fun. So uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to be doing another live show in a little bit. Yes, so stay here. If you're a real glutton for punishment, hang around. Otherwise, Bye. see you next time. Bye. Bye.